Grace and peace unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Happy Sunday, family. My name is Patrick, and I am here to welcome you to Faithful Central Bible Church, where we believe God is building champions for victorious living, and we believe that you are one of them. If you're watching on Facebook, make sure that you share this with your friends, share it on your feed, share it with your followers. Let everybody who follows you know just how excited you are to gather with us on this first Sunday in June to celebrate, to glorify, to adore the name of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. If you're on YouTube, make sure that you like, comment, share, subscribe, tap that notification bell. You want to get the alerts every time the Family of Champions post new content there on our YouTube channel. And if you're on our website, welcome. Make sure that you take time, explore the page, get to know a little bit about us, find out about all the amazing things that are happening in the house. One thing you'll see is that on June the 15th, Faithful Central Dance Ministry will be hosting auditions right here on our campus in the Trinity Building at 6.30 p.m. Now auditions are open to everyone ages 10 and up. And you wanna get registered for this, and here's how you're gonna do it. You're gonna to go to our text line. The number is 833-321-3222. Again, that number is 833-321-3222. And here's what you're gonna text. F-D-M audition. Again, right there to our text line, you're gonna text F-D-M audition and you want to do that on or before June 10th. So if you if you know that God has called you to, to the dance and you want to worship him in the dance, this may be your moment. This may be your shot. This may be your chance. So you want to avail yourselves to that. But we have so many amazing things happening in the house. There's ministry for artists, as you see with our faithful dance ministry, but there's also children and youth services that we have. We have JAM, which stands for Jesus and Me, which is led by Dr. Terry McCaskill. We have G1 Middle School Ministry, which is led by Pastor Rondell Eskridge. And we also have The Source, which is led by our very own Pastor Matu Taylor. You want to get your youth in on these services. JAM stands for Jesus and Me, and they meet every Sunday morning here on our campus at 9.30 a.m. And for the summer, G1 Middle School Ministry will meet here at 9.30 each and every Sunday morning. And The Source, our high school ministry, meets every first and third Sunday right here on our campus. Again, that is at 9.30. But you also want to engage with our middle school ministry and our high school ministry on social media. It's a great time to get to know a little bit about who we are and what we believe, and also some of the great events and activities that we have planned that can be a blessing and a benefit to your middle schooler, to your high schooler, or even to your elementary age youth. So many great things are happening in the house. For more details, you most definitely want to visit our website. And if you have any questions that we can answer right now, there are ambassadors there in the chat who would love to answer any questions you may have. Even if you have a prayer request, Lay it out right there in the chat. And again, our, our ambassadors, our volunteers, our, our champions would love to come alongside you and support you, seeing how it is that we may help you to grow in your relationship with God. But also, there's so many things that are happening in the house, some of which happen on a reoccurring basis. I want to avail you to two. Number one, Set for Life with Pastor George Thompson. Every, every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on all of our streaming platforms. That's on Facebook, that's on YouTube, and it's on the website. Pastor George Thompson intentionally, deliberately equips you to live by design and not by default. Now that's a, that's a good slogan, but what does it mean? It means that we intentionally equip you with wisdom, with practical tools, with knowledge, even with exposure to experts around topics that are pertinent to you developing in your life and walk with the Lord, again, in a very practical way. It translates to real estate wisdom navigating student loan debt. We also meet with health and wellness experts along lines of not only physical fitness, but also mental wellness. Dr. Erica Holmes was one of the recent guests on Set for Life, as was Charlie Brookins. You wanna avail yourselves to this, and also be, be reminded that anytime you miss an episode, they're always available for you there on the YouTube channel, and also available for replay on our Facebook channel. Again, because we are about the kingdom work of building champions for victorious living here in the local community, but also right where you are, wherever that may be around the country or around the world. Let me know where you're tuning in from. What city? What state? What country? Where, where are you watching from right now? Put it right there in the chat. Somebody's watching and you're from Dallas. 
Somebody's watching from Atlanta. Somebody's watching from Philadelphia. Somebody's in New York City. Let us know where you're from. Somebody's watching from South Africa. Somebody's in London. Somebody's in Oxford. Somebody's in Brazil. Somebody, let me know right now where you're watching from because we want to welcome you. We want to celebrate you. Perhaps this is your first time. Get to know a little bit about us. We pray that you find this time to be encouraging, but we also pray that you find it to be a time of edification. In other words, we pray that your soul is built up, that you prosper as your soul prospers. But again, our dance ministry is hosting auditions on June 15th at 6.30 p.m. right here on our campus in the Trinity Building on Level A. You want to text FDM Audition. Again, that's FDM Audition to our text line, 833-321-3222. And while we're at it, just let me give you a little bit of practical advice. Maybe this will help you. It's definitely helped me. I saved the text line in my phone as a contact. That's good, huh? I saved the text line in my phone as a contact, so I never have to remember the number. So whenever I want to text or register for something that's happening here at the house, I just open up my text messages and I type FCBC text line and the number's already there. I don't have to remember 833. I don't remember uh, 3213222. Even though it's an easy number to remember, the fact that you've saved it as a contact in your phone will allow you to easily access it and register for the various events that are happening here at the house. So again, for the dance ministry auditions, again, that's available to ages 10 and up and you wanna register on or before June 10th, but you're texting the word FDM audition. FDM Audition. It's going to be a great time. We exhort you to come and use your gift of dance to worship the Lord and to celebrate Him. And perhaps someone seeing you minister, someone seeing you serve, someone, see, someone seeing you using the gifts and the talents that the Lord has blessed you with to turn around and give Him honor, give Him glory, give Him praise, and, and point to His majesty through the art of dance may be the very inspiration that they need to keep going in the fight. So avail yourselves to it. Also, Set for Life, Pastor George Thompson, Live by Design, Not by Default, where he's joined by special guests as well as his co-host, Danette Wilkerson, or even Crystal Moselle. You want to avail yourselves to it because there are resources, there are tools there that will equip you to overcome debt, to overcome any financial hardships that you may be experiencing, will equip you with the wisdom, the tools, the steps to not only address those, but eradicate those. Every Wednesday night, here's the second thing I told you that happens on a weekly basis here at Faithful Central. Wednesday night service with Pastor John Paul Foster. You do not want to miss it. Every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. on all of our streaming platforms, again, that's on a website, that's on YouTube, and it's on our Facebook page. Every Wednesday night, we gather around the Word of God and we go deep into the Word of God and we go deep into the things of God because again, it is God's desire. It is the, the, the life calling or the heart posture of the disciple to be growing continuously in the Word of God. And one of the ways that we do that is not only by teaching the Word of God, but gathering as a community around the Word of God because it is in community that we're built up. This, this, this faith that we hold dear to, this faith that we claim and call to be our own is a communal faith. It's not meant to be done alone. That's why we call ourselves the family of champions. You may be watching us for the first time. You maybe have never even heard of Faithful Central Bible Church. First of all, we believe that God has sovereignly navigated your steps to this place in this time. We believe that God has something that he wants to say to you. We believe that God has something he wants to speak to you. And more to the point, we believe that God has something that he wants to do in and through your life that will bring his name glory, honor, and praise in the earth. So we welcome you. You are welcome here. So avail yourselves to the various resources, the various opportunities that are here at the house because we want to see you grow and be built up and be edified in your most holy faith. We have our children and youth services again with Dr. Terry McCaskill teaching Jesus and me. Pastor Rondell Eskridge leads our G1 middle school ministry and Pastor Matu Taylor leads our high school ministry that we call The Source. It's again an opportunity for champions of every age and at every stage, all educational levels. It's a time for you to get connected. It's a time for you to gather with the family. It's a time for you to be, to be encouraged and to be equipped. 
Building Champions TV is Faithful Central's new digital library, searchable by time, location, book of the Bible, or inspirational topic. This incredible resource catalogs 40 years of messages into one convenient place. Want to see this week's message or watch a message Bishop Ulmer preached 20 or 30 years ago? Subscribe to buildingchampions.tv. It's like our very own Netflix for the family of champions. Remember this one? Now, half the choir is going to sing, I love you, Jesus. And the other choir is going to sing, worship the Lord. Like-minded means Like-minded means As a chorus Everybody's singing Watch Building Champions TV on your television or personal mobile device and be inspired. $40 per year gives you access to 40 years of transformative content. Visit buildingchampions.tv and sign like up today. Mine. This is the first Sunday, and on the first Sunday, we hold communion. What is communion? Communion is the Lord's mandate, the call that he leaves us with as disciples, that every time we gather as a family to remember him. I wanna read you a little bit out of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and then we're gonna get ready to go into worship. It says this, I'm gonna read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24, and when he, that being Jesus, had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it. Here it is, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Family, we're gonna honor the Lord in communion, but it is also a time for the broken body of Christ to be put back together. It's a time for the family to reconnect. It's a time for the family to remember. And now the time has come for the family to worship. Let's worship. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Are you ready to praise the Lord? Well, come on, stand in your feet. Let's bless his name. Give him glory in this house. Turn to somebody and say, I'm glad you're here to praise the Lord with me. You at home, we're glad you're here. We want to teach you a new song. We ask that you would listen and then sing along with us as we bless and magnify the name of the Lord. We're going to trust in Him today. Is that all right? All right, amen. I will trust in the Lord all my days, all my days. I will trust in the Lord all my days, all my days, I will be satisfied with you. I will be satisfied with you. Said I will be satisfied with you. I will be satisfied with you. Yeah, I will trust in the Lord all my days. All my, All my days, I will, I will trust in the Lord. All my days, I will be satisfied with you. You tell me to left, I will be satisfied with you. If you tell me to go right, I will be satisfied with you. Whatever you tell me to do, I'm satisfied with you. 
Lifting up holy hands, I will be Trust your word You'll have complete control Said I will be satisfied with you song said, where you lead, I'll go. It says, I will trust your word. Hallelujah. For you have complete control. And I will be satisfied with you. Can you make that your testimony this morning? Let's say, where you lead, I'll go. Well, that's it. Come on, talk to the Lord. Tell him, I will trust your word. I will trust your word. Hallelujah. Come on, say you have complete. You have complete control. Oh Lord, you have it all. Say it. I will. I will be satisfied. 
That's a big statement. Come on, say it one more time. Where you lead, I'll go. Where you lead, I'll go. Father, I surrender myself. Say, I will trust your word. I will trust your word. Hallelujah. Come on, you have complete. You have complete control. Hallelujah. Say, and I will be satisfied. Bless his name, bless his name, bless his name. Hallelujah. There's an old song that simply says this. It says, I will trust in you always. Come on, say it. Always. Say, I will. I will trust in you always. Always. Hallelujah. Ancient of days. Thank you, Jesus. Say, for you are the rock of the age. says, thy word, O Lord, come on, thy word, O Lord, is a lamp unto my feet, is a lamp unto my feet, hallelujah, and a light, and a light unto my path. my path, come on, tell them, say, my faith is in, my faith is in every word you speak, every word you speak, that's it, for your word, for your word is all, that will last, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Come on. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. With all thine heart. Come on, say it. We not to your own understanding. Oh, that's it. Come on. In all thy ways. Come on, say it. In all thy ways. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. And he shall direct.
Let that be the meditations of our heart. Trusting God always. Let's pray. Lord, we come today trusting you in all circumstances. Lord, you are alpha at the beginning. Lord, you are omega at the end. You are everywhere in between. We trust you. Lord, in all circumstances, you are the one that rose Lazarus from the dead, Lord. You're the one that blesses us, keeps us, delivers us, Lord, and blesses us. And we come today saying thank you. Lord, as we enter into our communion time, Lord, we do it as a family. We do it together. And Lord, we come with thankful hearts as Jesus laid his life down for our sins so that we can walk in the freedom and the blessing that you have for us. Lord, we say this prayer in the name of Jesus and all the blessed people of God said, amen, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise as you're taking your seat. In that same spirit, a table is being set. And as you're preparing the elements, you may be joining us at home and you may not have the elements, but you may get a piece of bread or you may get a cracker. You may get some juice, water, or you may get some wine. I'm not mad at you. But it's getting your heart in a posture as we take communion. And the Bible says, before we eat of the bread or drink of the cup, we must first examine ourselves. In today's world, it's like taking a selfie and looking and how God has blessed us as we come into June. We're right now in the middle of the year, almost the middle of the year. And what God has done in the past, what he's doing right now, and then looking forward to what God is going to do in the future with expectancy. We live our lives that we praise him just like he's coming back. We praise him. Amen? The Bible says... The Bible says Jesus sat with his disciples and he took bread and he blessed it. Let's lift that up. And he said, this is my body which is for you. Take and eat ye all. And in the same manner, he took the cup. So this is a cup of a new covenant between me and you. Because he knows that this is a forgiveness of sins. So take and drink ye all. How many know it's the blood? Amen. Let's worship. From me. How many know it was way back on Calvary? Back Hallelujah! On Calvary, on Calvary. say the blood, the blood that gives that me gives strength, strength from death. Jump right into it. Come on. Somebody declare. Say it reaches to the highest. Hey. Well, somebody remembers this song. It says, and it flows.
the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come today thanking you and praising you. Every time we take communion, Lord, we always do this in remembrance of you. Lord, we come with thankful hearts today, praising hearts today, loving hearts today, and sharing hearts today, Lord. Lord, as we enter into our time of giving and offering, Lord, I pray that we're cheerful givers, Lord. And Lord, that you continue to bless us to be a blessing. Lord, we say this prayer in the name of Jesus. And all the blessed people of God said, amen, 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 in Jesus' name. As you're taking your seat, you can continue to praise the Lord. It is offering time. It's time we worship the Lord. All right, in giving, amen. And as you're preparing your very best gift, you need an offering envelope, lift your hands, and usher will bring one to you. And as you're preparing your very best to give during our offering time, there are four ways in which you can give. First of all, all of you that are joining us online, the first is you can click it. Right now in the chat, there's a link that you can click on. Or you can always go to our website at faithfulcentral.com. You click on the Give button, there'll be a drop-down menu where you're able to tithe, and then also offering. And then we have a very special line item. It's called pastoral care. That's where you sow in the bishop's life just as he's sown into your life. The second way in which you can give is you can text it. Text the word GIVE to 833-321-3222. And the third way in which you can give is we have an app that you can download and utilize. And that's on Google Play or in the App Store. Or you can mail it to us or drop it off. As you see, they're giving receptacles right at the doors, but you can mail it to us at 333 West Florence Avenue, Inglewood, California, 90301. And hey, we want you to know that we're praying for you, and also we are thankful for your giving and being faithful in your giving, and know that we pray for you every day. And also know that we do a very special prayer every day in the area of jobs, and new businesses and promotion. We pray that God would open doors for, the, for you in that area. Jobs, promotions, and new businesses. We call it job check. So far this year, God has blessed this house with over 249 new jobs and businesses. If you got a job this week, haven't been counted, you got a job, a promotion, or start a business, stand to your feet. It is job, he popped up quick. It is job check time online in the chat. Type in, I got a job, I got a promotion, or I started a business. We're at 249. You know what? You're going to be 250 because you jumped up so fast, okay? I'm going to 251, 252, 253. Brother, you standing? That's all I need. 254, and you got a kid with you. I love it. 255. Brother, 256, 257. I know your mom excited. I saw her earlier. 256, 257. Two, Yolanda K is 258. How many know God is in the blessing business? Amen. We count numbers, but God makes numbers count. Amen. You guys, it is election season right now, and it's time for us to make sure that we vote. But also, we're going to have some reflections, and also we're going to have that's going to say a word. We're going to have Dr. Shirley Weber. She's a California. She's our Secretary of State. And have her come forward. For the state of California. Dr. Good morning. Weber. Thank you so very much for having us here with you today. I'm Dr. Shirley Weber. I'm your California Secretary of State the first African-American to ever hold that position in 170 years. And so I am blessed to be with you today to know that we have much to talk about when it comes to Tuesday and the elections. I never thought as a kid growing up in South Central LA, raising the Pueblos of Los Angeles the Projects, and on 45th and Broadway, graduated from Manual Arts High School, got three degrees from UCLA by the time I was 26, but God has been good to me for all of those reasons. And now we're faced with a challenge in terms of elections. I never thought in my lifetime that I'd be fighting the battle of my grandparents and my parents who in the South, and that is the right to vote. And people trying to take that right away from us. And so as our Secretary of State, I am committed to making sure that we vote and that we vote in great numbers and that we vote our interests finally and that people know who we are. I'm here today with my good friend, Rob Bonta, who is our Attorney General. And he is central to my administration. 
He's up for election as well. He's the first Filipino to serve as our attorney general. And the good thing, he and I have worked so hard together in the Capitol on so many issues of police force. Some of you know me because of police force and changing the standards of, of policing, but also my reparations bill to get justice for African Americans in this country. All of those things, Rob Bonta was with me. And as we fight now to make sure that we don't have these laws that restrict us from voting, He's carrying, he's now my attorney at the Attorney General's office to basically fight that battle with me. But I just want you to know that we are pleased to be here today and we have come a mighty long way as black folks. In this election, you will get a chance to probably for the first time out of the 18, uh, con uh, the eight constitutional officers, you'll have a chance to vote for three individuals in as constitutional officers. Myself as Secretary of State, Rob Bonta as our Attorney General, and Malia Coyne, who's at another church this morning, who will be basically our controller. We ask for your support. We ask for your participation. We should vote in great numbers because we know what it is like when you don't have the right to vote, and we know what it's like when you don't have anything to vote for. We've got all of that now, the right to vote, something to vote for. Remember us, comes this Tuesday, make every member of your family go vote. Every member of your family should vote in this election. Thank you so very much. I appreciate being with you this morning, Bishop. Dr. Shirley Weber. Wow, she did everything except take a text, amen. Also, thank you for joining us, uh, Rob Bonta as, as well, amen. And then also, we'd like to hear from Congresswoman Karen Bass, that's running for mayor of Los Angeles. Ms. Bass. Sounds one Bass. God is good all the time. Thank you so much. It is wonderful to worship with you again as I've been here many times before as my good friend and history maker, Dr. Weber said, and Abanta, our attorney general, two history makers. We have an important election. You can vote today. You can vote tomorrow, and you can vote Tuesday. But let me just tell you something. I'm worried because our numbers are really low. So far, only 10% of the people eligible to vote have voted. And when it comes to black folk, it's only 7% of us. 7%. Let me just tell you, this election is a historic election. We are at a crossroads in our city. The question is, are we going to move forward in the future together, or are we going to go backwards and take up old strategies that have never helped our people? When you are thinking about voting, I want you to remember two numbers. I want you to remember the number nine and the number 40. Why? Because we have over 50,000 people sleeping on our streets every night. Four of them didn't wake up this morning, okay, because they die every day on our streets. The number nine is because black folk only make up 9% of the population in Los Angeles, but we are 40, did you hear me? 40% of the people in those tents. So when you drive by those tents, just remember that 40% of them look like you. That's the crossroads. Help us, we have to move our city forward. Please vote and please pray for me over these next 72 hours. Thank you, thank you, Pastor Omer. Yes, give them a hand and let's, and let's continue to vote. Also, can you guys give yourselves a hand? Give yourselves a hand. You guys have made it. We're at June, you know, we're coming into the middle of the year. Give yourselves a hand. Also, I'd like to acknowledge all of our guests. If you're visiting with the family of champions, it's your first, your second, or your third time. Can you wave at us? Just wave at us, just wave at us. You're visiting with us, amen. On behalf of Bishop Almer, First Lady Tagata, the entire family of champions, we want to welcome you here today. This is a Bible-based, spirit-led, Christ-centered church. We pray that you learn something, come back again and again to visit us. But also, when you come back, you're no longer a guest. Now we consider you family. Amen? Well, praise the Lord. Let's continue to worship.
deserves a mighty praise. Come on, I wish I had about 300 people help me give the Lord a hand of praise today. Come on, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. Father, it is in the name of Jesus that we pray that we thank you as we come into your presence with thanksgiving and with praise. Oh God, we bless your name today. You're a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. We bless your name, oh God, for all that you've done, for all that you are doing. And Lord, we have enough faith to thank you for what you're going to do before you even do it. And so bless us now as we come to hear your word, as we participate in the very rights, the challenges, and the destiny that you've given us in this country, in this land, in this city. We pray your blessings upon this city of lost angels. Pray that you would have mercy upon us, that you would sovereignly move, and change the landscape, and position this place as a demonstration of your love, your mercy, and your grace. Oh Lord, we ask that you would speak to us and speak through us. It is that our prayer that you would do it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Anybody been blessed? Wow, wow, wow. Thank the Lord. I, I, uh, ushers, you can fill in the seats where the politicians left down here. If you, anyone comes in, you can. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 I, I, I want to exhort you and encourage you. I'm looking over this crowd and most of us, most of us have relatives and uh, great grandparents and grandparents who some suffered, some died for the privilege to vote. We, we have a legacy to maintain of the sacrifices that have been made long before we got here. And I pray that we would not drop the ball in our generation. But I, and then, so I want to encourage you, I'm going to encourage you, you have three days left to be involved in this process. We, we look back at history and see the advances that have been made. We look forward to see the advances that are yet to be made. And yet we have an opportunity to make history. We have an opportunity to make history. Um, Representative Bath, won't you stand, uh, Karen, won't you stand up one more time? Um, this young lady is poised to make history. I, I, I say that, I say that not just because I count her as a friend and as her, her record, but I say that because I think that uh, as we come into this next season, God's trying to do a new thing. And I want to encourage you to be involved in this process. Give, give your pastor, Dr. Johnson, a shout out for me. Um, but I, I, I think... I don't want us to underestimate the opportunity. That, that's what I want to say. I don't want us to underestimate the opportunity. Um, I, I think we need to make a statement that you can't buy a position. We, we just need to say that and say that, okay? But more than that, not, not just because of, of her color, not just because of her gender, but because she's qualified. Well, let's cut to the chase. She's qualified. And so I want you, I want you to be involved. I want you to uh, take the effort, make the time, make the time. If you can't find the time, take the time, make the time uh, to the next three days. Like you said, you can vote today, tomorrow, and the next day. But I want you to be counted. I want you to be involved in this process. Glad to have with her chromatics. God bless you. Her right hand, her left hand. Shout out to Lady Capri. But she has a great team. She has a great team. She understands this city. She understands the whole political game, and I, 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 I don't want us to miss the opportunity. That, that's the word. And so um, you say, get out to vote. Uh, get y'all out to vote, okay? Get, get everybody, everybody out to vote. That's the new Ebonics call. Everybody vote, all right? Uh, give her another hand. God bless you for coming, Karen. Bless you, bless you. Amen. 
that have those of you, those of you who are watching us and joining us online, thank you for being a part of our online campus. Uh, shout out to Canada, shout out to South Africa, shout out to England and London. Uh, honored to have you with us today, joining us literally from around the world. I'm uh, glad to have a young lady who was a part of the, f the formation and the foundation and the formulation of this ministry many years ago. Dr. Redura Stewart is with us. Stand up, Redura. Dr. Redura was with us way back in the day. She's now in the Washington, D.C. area. She is forever a daughter of this house and the things that God is doing in her life are a tribute to her faithfulness. Come with me to the book of Isaiah. Come with me to the book of Isaiah. Now listen, listen. While you're turning, I'm asking, I'm asking for your help on my next book. I, I've written 10, 11 books, whatever, but I've never done uh, a book with this kind of format. And that is, I'm asking you to send me your stories. Send me your stories um, about your connection with the LGBT community, your experience with it. Uh, I've gotten notes from parents. I've got notes from sons and daughters. Um, we just want to know your story. We'll give you particular details if you want to be involved. Uh, where, yeah, you just text the word book to that number. Um, I want to hear your story. I want to hear your story. I've never, never done a book like this before, uh, but I want to hear your story uh, as we, as we uh, wrestle with and continue to wrestle with this, this issue. I've, I've had... I've had letters and notes and emails and texts from sons and daughters. I've had same thing from mothers and fathers um, who love the Lord, who love the Lord. And I want to hear your story. Now, let me just say this. Let me just help you. Uh, if you can't handle it, if we don't take your story, don't get mad. Don't start picketing and don't, you know, boycotting and everything. Uh, don't get your feelings hurt, all right? Uh, it's like when you have testimony service, you can't tell at all, okay? But our, uh, I, I want to hear your story, and we will do our best to use as many, if not the whole story, certainly the quotes um, of your journey, your journey, either as a parent, as a friend, uh, or someone who's a part of that community. If you'll text to that number, text to that information, uh, we'll give you information and, and directions as to how you can do that. Amen? Come with me to the book of Isaiah. To the book of Isaiah, Isaiah or Isaiah, if that's your persuasion, uh, chapter 56, chapter 56. Now, we got a lot going on today, okay? We've done a lot. So now, uh, if you finish before I do, um, uh, just kind of work with me, okay? Work, work, work with me, all right? Here we go, Isaiah chapter 56, verse 7, verse 7, verse 7. Luke King James says, and make them joyful in my house. Everyone say my house. In my house of prayer. Watch that. Make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. Here it is. Here it is. Underline this. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all all nations. One version says all people. One version says for all. Verse 8. The Lord God who gathers the outcast, underline the word outcast, or whatever word is in your, in your version, who gathers the outcast says, yet I will gather to him others besides those who are gathered to him. Translation. I'm going to get those who are not here yet. I'm going after those who are not here yet. Uh, when, when, when we de this, uh, announced that we were going to end this series today, uh, quite honestly, I didn't know that it was the beginning of, of Gay Pride Month, and I've been getting notices all around the country uh, from friends and others about the timing of it. I did not know that, uh, but I'm done with it today, okay? I'm done. <laughs> Baby, let me tell you, this, this has been rough, okay? I, uh, I've already been, uh, they've already said I'm coming out the closet, okay, and then they've said I'm gay bashing, so um, I'm damned if you do and damned if you don't, okay, so work with me, people, work with me, here we go, here we go, here's what God says, my house shall be called the house of prayer for all people, I, I, I want to, I want to, um, place limitations on what I'm gonna to say today when you, when you write uh, certain academic documents, you set limitations and you say, here's what I'm not gonna talk about, okay? So I I'm, I'm understand that my direction is for those 
who are Christian and in the LGBT community. I know that's an oxymoron for some of you, but I'm going to work on that for a minute. I also only want to talk, and my word is only directed to those who accept, acknowledge, or will accept or acknowledge, accept or acknowledge the word of God as authority. Okay? So that if, if you, if you um, are, are deeply planted and rounded in an atheistic position, this, this won't make sense to you. I want to do my best to speak from a theocentric, bibliocentric, Christocentric perspective. Okay? Uh, that, that's where I'm coming from. Um, I want to say a word about how do you, uh, can you be gay? Can you be in that community and love the Lord? Okay? So stay with me. That, that's my framework. That's, that's where I'm coming from. Because God says, his house shall be called a house of prayer for everybody, all right. for all peoples, all nations. One version says, all ethnicities. My house shall be called a house of prayer for everyone. And then he says, and into my house, I will gather the outcast. I will gather the outcast. Very important word, I will gather the outcast. He says, he says I will gather those who have been locked out. I will gather those who have been driven away. Another spin on that word. Uh, I, have, I will gather those who have been led away. Um, another spin on that same word. He says, uh, I will gather those uh, who have been seduced away. I, I will gather those who um, have not been allowed to come. And then I will gather those who came and were driven away. God says, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. It is the word of invitation. It is the word of inclusion. Um, he, says, he says, the doors of my house are open for everyone. It is an invitation and it is inclusive. I, I want to just lay, lay out f from, from the top what, what my goal is for us, for you, for me, for this house. God says it's my house. Uh, particularly since the day of Pentecost uh, and even back in the Old Testament, the people of God, the gathering of God was, was metaphorically spoken of as the house of God. Uh, over and over we hear in the Old Testament, especially many times in the Psalms about coming to the house of God, the house of God. One thing he says, one thing I've desired, if I can just get to the house of God. And so I speak of the gathering of the people of God. I speak of the gathering place of the people of God. I, people of the peop I speak of the people of God. And so I pray that this, that this house would be a manifestation of that verse, that it would be a house of prayer for everyone. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I, I'll give you a disclaimer. Much of this is from a personal perspective. Um, I, I, I've been, been doing this now about 40 years. Stay back, stay there, stay there. I, I want to go back. I, I want to go back and set the stage for what brought me to this text, okay? Um, I come from a tradition, coming from a tradition where uh, at some point in the service, usually at the end, they say the doors of the church are open. The doors of the church. Doors of the church, or they say the door is open. I always wonder how long has it been closed and who got the key and who, but that's a whole nother conversation. But they said the, the door is open, the door is open. And I wondered how wide is it open. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. I pray that this will be a safe house. A safe house house. Other places, God says, uh, my house, uh, it says, you are my refuge. And it speaks of the house of God, uh, the gathering of the people of God as a refuge, as a safe place. Uh, I pray that this will be a house of healing. I pray that we would fulfill that verse and we'll be a house, a house of welcome. 
Part of this is personal because I, uh, I many, many years ago, I was serving at a church and, and uh, it was, it was, uh, it was uh, New Year's Eve night, watch night service, watch night service. And uh, I, I was at the organ, I was playing, and a lady came in the back door and she had on some red hot pants. If you know what hot pants are, you just told us how old you are, okay? It's a true story. And, and they were tight. I was way at the other end of the church, and I could tell they were tight, 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 <laughs> tight. And red hot pants. True story. In back of the door right there, on uh, on uh, New Year's Eve, like she came in, she came, got maybe four or five steps in, ready, looking for a, looking for a seat, and and some brothers came around her and and ushered her. They, she started ushering around, and and I was at the front of the church, and I could hear that girl saying, "I just want to hear about Jesus." She she said, "I, I just want to hear about Jesus." And they put her out of that church. It was clear. It was clear. I don't mean to be judgmental. I mean to be observational. Um, she, she was, she had been working. Okay. Let's, let's, let's go there. And, and the message was, uh, this house is not a house for like folk like you. And they put her out of this church. They put her out of this church. So, so prostitutes were not welcome in that church. Put her out. And I'll never forget it. She kept saying, I just want to, I just want to hear about Jesus. I just want to hear about Jesus. And they put her out of the church. A few years later, I became pastor of this church. I'd only been here for a couple of years, maybe a year and a half. And uh, our church was on 61st and Hoover. And once, one, one, one day, uh, a group of Hispanic brothers came. One was a pastor, one was of the church. And they, they were Seventh-day Adventists, Seventh-day Adventists. And they came and they said, oh, Pastor, I said, hey, how, are you guys, how are you guys doing? And he said, he said, my name is so-and-so, I'm the pastor, he says. And I'm the pastor of Seventh-day Adventist Church, he says. And I've noticed that your church, uh, you know, you guys are not too busy on Saturday, which it wasn't. It was closed. And he said, he said, we, we would like to know, would, would, would you allow us to have service on, sun, on Saturday? You guys are not there. It wouldn't be a conflict. You allow us to work, have service at your church? <laughs> to, to use your building on a Saturday. I went back to took it to the leadership at that time. I'll never forget it as long as I live. And one of the ladies stood up. She said, we don't want them people in here. She said, they, they'll tear up our church. No, they can't. No, no, they ain't going to come here and mess up this church. And, and I went back the following week, and I had tears in my eyes, and I said, sir, I said, Pastor, I'm sorry. I said, I'm sorry. They, they, they won't let me do that. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Um, I pray that this will be a house of healing. I pray it will be a house of welcome. Dr. Derek Wade, uh, in his doctoral research, a very gifted scholar, says this. He says, by being understanding and accepting and non-condemnatory uh, uh, and attentively listening, he says, as pastors in churches, he says, we can gain the trust of those who have been hurt by the church. Um, some things the church got to repent of. Uh, uh, uh. I, uh, there's an old song, old song, some of y'all too young remember this, some of y'all too young remember this. Uh, Come and go with me to my father's house. To my father's house, to my father's house, come go with me to my father's house. There's joy, joy, joy. Then one verse says, peace and happiness there. In my father's house. You know. There's joy, joy, joy. And one says, no more dying there. In my father's house. Right? Come and go, come and go, come and go. I, I, um, I, here's the invitation. Come, 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 come. Come and go with me. Come into my father's house. Um, it is a house of love. Uh, I think that's where I want to start. Come. Come into this house of love. Here we go. Uh, L, L, this house of, of love. Romans 5, Romans 5, verse 5, verse five says, says, <clears throat> says for, for God has poured out his love. Poured out, poured out his love 
it's, it, it implies lavishly poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. God, so, so that those of us who come, he, he pours his love into us. And, and, and then, he said, then he says in verse 8, it says, and he demonstrated his love. God, I love this verse. God demonstrated his love that while, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He, he demonstrated, he, he put his love on display. Uh, he, he expressed his love. And then while we were all sinners, still sinners, he didn't tell us to go and get your stuff together and come back when you get it together. He didn't say go and clean up your life, change your life. You know? No. He said, but while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us as a demonstration of his love. And so I invite you to the house of love. Peter says this, Peter says, Peter says, for love, love covers a multitude of sins. Uh, a whole bunch of sin. Buku sins. So, so those of you who only had one or two, you know, I guess this ain't your verse. But for those of us who had multitudes, uh, he, he covered it. God, I love it. He covers it with his love. Um, he, his love is coverable. He, he covers it with his love. Uh, as a demonstration of his love. Listen to that. Listen to that. Listen to that. He pours out his love. While we were yet sinners. God, I love it. And then when we sin, he covers our sin. A multitude with his love. Come and go with me to my father's house. It's a house of love. Here's the second thing. It's a house of grace. L love G grace. It is a house, listen to me, it is a house of God's riches at Christ's expense. Grace, grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. The Bible says, and we start this thing looking at the book of Ephesians, God says, for by faith, brother, for by grace are we saved. So you are saved by God's riches According to Christ's expense. It's, it's the payment that God released by grace. Grace assuming that you, you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't earn it. You couldn't have earned it because he loved you before while you were still sinning. And so he says that we're saved by grace, by grace. Grace. Now, 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 he gives us, he gives us a, a, a warning, warning in Romans chapter 6. He says, now be careful, Vic, slow your roll, slow your roll. He says, don't, don't go on sinning just to get more grace. He says, uh, uh, shall, we, shall we go on sinning that grace may abound? Okay, let me help you on that. Um, it's the idea of, well, if I sin, I get grace. And... Uh, so the more I sin, the more grace I get. Uh, so uh, I need more grace. So as I sin, God gives me more grace. Dietrich Bonhoeffer calls that cheap grace. That means taking God for, God for granted. Okay, y'all ain't got that. Um, has any, anybody ever been cheated on? All right, and nobody in here. All right, I got you back there. Me and my sister back in the back, way back in the back. All right, all right. So, so, so here, here, here it is. You got cheated on. Cheated. Cheater cheated on you. Now, and when you were cheated, uh, you, you forgave, didn't you? I mean, you don't know. I'm just checking. Work with me for illustration's sake, okay? Just for 
So, 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 you got cheated on and, and you were forgiven. Now, if the brother says, when I did it then, she forgave me. So, um, or, um, uh, so, so, if I do it again, I'm counting on her to forgive me. And, and if I do it again, and if I do it again, and if I do it again, so it's like, I, oh, I know she loves me. I know she loves me because the more I cheat, the more she forgives me. Okay. All right. How many of you are still with that brother? Okay. <laughs> but, but you see where I'm going? It's, it's taking God for granted. And so the Bible says, the Bible says we're saved by grace, but, but you, don't, you don't keep sinning just to get more grace. <laughs> oh, see, it's going to be a rough day in here today. So the Bible says we're saved by grace. We're all saved the same way. As the old song says, you got to come in at the door. And you're not the, the, the gatekeeper. You're not the gatekeeper. And so God says that he releases his grace to us. And it is by grace that we're saved. Wow. He adds his grace he giveth and giveth and giveth more grace. His grace and his mercy, morning by morning, new mercies and grace we see. Listen to me. Grace does not eliminate the struggle. Grace equips you for the struggle. Let me try that again. Um, Remember Paul, Paul, the Bible says Paul had a thorn in the flesh. Now, I told you before, there have been dissertations written on, on what the thorn is. Uh, thorn is this, thorn is that. Your whole book's been written on, on, on what the thorn is. Uh, I'll tell you what it is. The thorn, I don't know what it is. I don't know. That's not the point. But it was in the flesh. So, the Bible often talks about sexuality and sexual issues uh, as a battle between the flesh and the spirit. So, whatever it was, is about the flesh. Okay, uh, my, my, my sexuality is related to my fleshly expressions. Now, now, he says, he says, whatever it was, it was a thorn in my, it was a struggle with my flesh, and I tried to get rid of it. So whatever it was was in the flesh, whatever it was, he didn't want it. And whatever it was, he prayed three times for God to move it. And whatever it was, he didn't want it, he prayed three times for God to move it, and God did not move it. God said, I won't take it away, but I'll add something to it. And God says that the struggle that he, the thorn that he had, the struggle that he had, the pain that he had, the challenge that he had was wrapped up in grace. Because God says, I won't take it away. I'll add my grace and my grace is sufficient. And so God teaches about the sufficiency of grace, the sufficiency of grace. And he says, that, listen, as far as we know, Paul lived the rest of his life with whoever that thorn was. L let me help some of y'all right up in here. Some of you, some of you, some of you, some, 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 some may see miraculous deliverances, may see miraculous changes in God, the power of God to change your life. Some of you may see that. Some of you may end up uh, going on and changing your life and changing your direction. Some of you will. Most of you won't. Most of you won't. Some of you you will wrestle with it for the rest of your life. But God will add his grace. And his grace is sufficient. And it is through the grace that you'll wrestle with it. Listen to me. It is the very wrestle that validates your relationship with God. I'm going too fast. It is the very struggle that, that validates your relationship with God. Were it not for the presence of God, were it not for the spirit of God, were it not for the salvation that God has given you, no, not for the power that God has given you, you wouldn't even struggle. The very fact that you struggle is indication. The fact that God is present, God is there, God loves you, God still cares, God's still walking with you, God's still looking at you, God still has his hand on you, God still has his eyes on you. It's the very fact that God is there. And some of you will struggle the rest of your life. But his grace is sufficient. Don, Don, Donnie was right. Donnie was right. Johnny McClurkin was right. McClurkin was right. Yeah. We fall down. We, we fall down. And, and we get up. Yeah. 
It, it, listen to me. It is the presence and power of God that enables you to get up. Some of you will deal with it the rest of your life. I, I, I'm, I'm, 74 year, I'm 74 years old. And, and, and my, my struggle, my struggle with women, looking at women, and, and Lord said you can lose eye for that, but I ain't got time for that right now, y'all, y'all working. No, here's my point. Listen to me. I kid you not. I'm 74 years old. And I still struggle with it. I struggle every day of my life. I'm sure there's an age that you get to where you don't look anymore. It ain't 74. I'm just saying. Here's my point. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, that's all I want you to see. We're, we're all in the same boat. We're in this thing together. And, and so God, God says, welcome to this house, this house of grace, house of grace, house of grace. And then he says, welcome to this house of love. Welcome to this house of grace. Here's the B. Welcome to this house of blessing. I want this house of blessing. Now watch this, throw your curve. The blessing is in the endurance. Give me that one again. The blessing is in the endurance. I love what it says in James chapter 1. James chapter 1 verse 12 says this. It says, blessed, blessed is the man who perseveres. One version says, blessed is the man who endures. The, the blessing is in the endurance. The blessing is in the perseverance. The blessing is in the hanging in there. Under trial, under challenge, under temptation. The blessing is in the hanging in there. And it says, he says, the blessing, when you have stood, I love it, when you have stood the test, because the words, the phrase stood the test is related to the word for persevere. The word persevere means to stand up, watch this now, to stand up under the pressure. It means to stand up under the load so that the blessing is in the standing up and the holding up under the pressure. And when you have stood, when you have stood, he says, you shall be blessed with the crown of life. The blessing is in the standing. It, mean, it means, it means you're, you're standing up under a weight and, and you, you don't just sit down and, and, and ignore it and wait for it to pass. No, the blessing is, is when you're in the struggle, you stand up, you stand up. And, and, and it's a picture of holding a weight. Some of you guys lift weights, you know, uh, when you do knee bends and you do down and up and all that kind of stuff, the more you do it, the stronger your legs get. The, the stronger you get, the more you stand up. Even when you feel like not standing up and sitting down, but if you stand and keep standing and stand and keep standing and stand and keep standing, your, arm, your legs, your thighs get strong enough to keep on standing. I say to you, when you've done all that you can to stand, keep on standing by the power and the grace of the Lord Jesus. I tell you, you can stand. Don't drop down and stay down. Your blessing is in getting up. Falling is not fatal. Falling is not final. God says, I'll give my grace. I'll give my power and stand up one more time. I don't care what they say about you. I don't care how they criticize you. I don't care how they point fingers at you. I don't care how they laugh at you. You stand and God says, your blessing is in the standing. The blessing is in the endurance. The blessing is in the endurance. It is in continuing to stand is the power that God gives you to keep standing. You won't be happy all the time. There's no verse for that. God's goal is not to make you happy, it's to make you holy. And you are holified by the power of God. Watch this, I gotta rush on, gotta, gotta rush on. He says, he says, the blessing is in the endurance and the standing. Here's the last one, I'm gonna cut the chase. It's a house of love, it's a house of grace, it's a house of blessing. Here's the T. It's a house of truth. Uh, let me go home on this one. It is the house of truth. When Jesus is praying in his high priestly prayer in John 17, he says, Father, sanctify them by your word, for your word 
is truth. When you enter this house, when you enter this house, when you enter this house, you come in the door, you come in the door, the door of God's authority, the door of the authority of God's word. That's going to be some of you, that's going to be an area where some of you struggle. Because to come into the house is to submit to the authority of the word of God. Let me say it again. You come in through the door. Is that something? No, you can't. You, you must come in at the door. You, you come in under the door of the authority of God. Under the, author, on the, under the door of, of the word of God. Now listen to me. Listen to me. Four ways to handle the truth of God. Four ways to handle it. Here's the first thing. You can reject it. I ain't feeling that. I'm out. As many have. As many have. The word of the Lord, the, uh, the power of God, the presence of God is not the authority on their life. I ain't mad at you. That's just the way it is. You, 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 to, 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 reject, to reject the theistic reality of God and the presence and power of God in your life, reject it. Jesus said, you're going to go in some place, knock on that door, and they won't receive you. Jesus said, shake the dust and go on down the road. Because some will reject it. Here's number one. Number one, you can reject it. Number two, you can try to repair it. There's a thing called reparative therapy where, where they say, well, I know it messed up, but we're going to fix it. it, was, it did something happened to your daddy, something happened to your mama, something happened to your little kid. And, and so there's a whole counseling thing now, a whole therapeutic thing, a whole psychological piece now where, where they're going to, I don't want to say psych you out of it, but, but counsel you out of it. Okay, that's enough i got to say to that. But in other words, to repair it, to fix it. We're going to fix you. We're going to fix you. That's your first problem. We're going to fix you. We're going to fix you. You can try to repair it. Okay. Here's the third thing. More common, you can revise it. You, you, you can say, well, yeah, I take the word of God, but, but I don't believe that, and I don't believe that, and I don't accept that, and, and, and that's not what that means, and that's not sin, and that's not sin. You know, it's interesting, uh, in, in many camps of, of the LGBT community, um, there's not much talk about sin. And so one way to re revisionist uh, 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 theology, revisionist approach to scripture is, well, we, we just don't take that part. Some of you guys know about a guy in history called Marcion. Marcion, Marcion uh, was, was a theologian, and he, when, when he got to, uh, got to a verse in the Bible, uh, ain't nobody got no Bibles around here. <laughs> it's a rough house, man. Ain't nobody got no Bibles in this house. Anyway, our, uh, paper. Anybody got any paper Bible? Okay, okay, okay. okay. Y'all pray for this church. We ain't got no Bibles in <laughs> So when Marcion, Marcion, Marcion get to a verse, you know, Bible that he didn't like, you know, <laughs> just ripped that page out. And he read, and he gets another section he didn't like, and he just ripped that page out. And he got to a verse and didn't like that page. He just ripped that page out. His Bible was like a pamphlet. <clears throat> More like a brochure. See. But, but, but you, at some point, you must decide, what will I do with the word of God? Jesus says you are sanctified by his word, and your word is truth. I can reject that truth, I can try to change that truth, I can try to fix that truth, or I can just take part of it. And the problem is, if you take that part, what else are you going to let go? I'll take, it's like a smart, I want that, I want that, and I don't want that, and I want that. And, and so you got to hand pick. But what do we do with the word of God that sanctifies us? Get ready, kid, I got to play something happy. It will. Um, watch this. You can integrate it. Not reject it, not revise it, not repair it, but integrate. What does that mean? I integrate the word of God into my life. It, it is my, 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 my response to the word of God is to assimilate and to organize my life under the authority of his word, which means this. My identity is connected to my connection with God. In other words, so, so I, re listen, I rearrange my life, I restructure my life, I integrate my life so that I am who he says I am. I ain't worried, I'm, I'm not who they say I am, I'm not who what the world says I am, I am who he says I am. My identity is inextricably woven within the fabric of my relationship with God. And I am who he says I am. He, he says, he says I am, and I'm enough. He said, I'm more than a conqueror. He said, I am saved by the power of God. 
I identify myself by who he says. I am fearfully and wonderfully made, whether you like it or not. I am who he says I am. I, I, I am equipped. I am more than a conqueror. I'm not just going to win. I'm going to win big. I am more than a conqueror. I am who he says I am. I walk by faith and not by sight, especially not by sight looking at you. I'm walking by faith, not by sight, because I am who he says I am. You got to get up some mornings and say, Lord, I thank you that I am. You am, so I am. It's bad English, but it's good authority. I am who God says. I integrate into my life, and I strive to be everything that he says I am in spite of who y'all say I am. I integrate into his life, into my life, the very word of God. It becomes my target. It becomes my standard. I submit myself to it. And then he says this. It is, listen to me, it is the word of God, it is the authority of God, it is the power of God through the truth of his word. Through the truth of his word. Paul says in, in, in uh, Corinthians, he says, such were some of you. I love that passage, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And there's a whole roll call. And he says, now, uh, some of this, some of that. He said, and all of y'all was something. Paul says, and, 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 and it's a list of sins. Don't, don't back off of that, list of sins. And so he says, some of y'all was all of that. Everybody in here is an X something, and all y'all ain't X yet. So, so he said, listen, but you were sanctified. God, I love that word. That's a good Pentecostal word. You were sanctified. The word sanctified, listen to me. Sanctification is a process. It is not instantaneous. San sanctification is three-dimensional. I have been sanctified, I am being sanctified, and I shall be sanctified. It is a process. It means that as I walk with God, as I make his word my priority, as I submit myself to his word, I am who he says I am, but I also am in a process in which I'm growing and I'm getting better and I'm stumbling and I'm falling and I miss it and I get back up and I shoot and I miss it and I shoot again and I strive and I fall and I get back up. And folk don't like me, but I don't look at him. I look at him because I am who he says I am and I walk and live my life under his authority and his authority he says that I am more than a conqueror. I will live my life according to his will and yet I will live in the power of him who shall give me the power to be what he wants me to be. Is anybody with me today? Uh, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Ready to go. Ready to go. Ready to go. Listen, listen. Well, what if I was born that way? Hmm. If I was born that way. Let me look at it another way. Uh, anybody in here on uh, uh, diabetic, don't raise, your hand, don't raise your hand. Diabetic medication, don't raise your hand. Put your hands down. Anybody on high blood pressure medication? Raise your hand. When you go to a doctor, the first thing they ask you is your medical history. And so many of us see things in our lives that we wasn't even our fault. And we do all of our best to adjust it to health and wholeness. Nobody's ever proven that there was a gene that's irrelevant. Some of you were born with a gene for bad hair. I ain't mad at you. I ain't, I ain't mad at you. And you either fix it better or buy some more. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. The point is, like they asked Jesus, whose fault was it? And Jesus said, that's the wrong question. The question is, as it is right now, the power of God can move in this man's life and change where he's going, not based on where he's been. Because sanctification is a process. Let me wrap this up. And so when you come into the house of God, you come into a household of God. Ah, you, you, you come into the house of God with fellow strugglers. 
Everybody in here struggling with something. You're in good company in this crowd. Because everybody in here has some, has some stuff. They stuff may not be your stuff. But you got some stuff. God's house is a house of stuff. Ain't no verse for that. I kind of made that up myself. Ain't, ain't no, ain't no. But you're being sanctified. You're growing. Watch this now. And you come into a place where you're wrestling and you're growing and you're growing and you're wrestling with people who are growing and wrestling just like you. And then Paul says, every part of the body needs the other part of the body. He says there are some parts of the body that are more attractive than others. Some of y'all got pretty eyes, but your feet are jacked up. But you need your feet to get to the mirror to see how to fix up your pretty eyes so you still need them jacked up feet. Because we all need each other. When you come into this house, you enter into the one another's. That's where I want to close it. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. We, we, we do what the Bible says. I'll pray for you. You pray for me. You hold me up, I'll hold you up. We'll grow together. We'll get stronger together. We need each other. That's the way God planned it. It's a house of love. It's a house of grace. It's a house of blessing. It's a house of truth. My house shall be called the house of prayer for everybody. Come into his house. I know that you come into a fellowship of imperfection. My sexual proclivity does not negate my spiritual position. And in this body, I'll pray for you. You pray for me. That's it. It's so simple, so simple, so simple. I, 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 I want to pray. I want to pray. I want to pray. Here it is. Here it is. Yes. anointing over this house that we will be a house
That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Savior, or if you just want prayer and then it's any of these areas, maybe you're a mother, a father, a parent struggling with the reality of a son or a daughter. Maybe you're a son or a daughter struggling with a relationship with a mother or a father. Maybe you're a brother or a friend, a sister or a friend. Know that you have come into the house of God. house of prayer for all people. Father, I pray a fresh anointing upon this house that as we both stand on your word and rely upon your spirit that you would make this a house of prayer for all people. May you go before us to lead us, beside us, to protect us, behind us, to push and encourage us, above us to cover us, beneath us to sustain us, and in us to fill us with your presence and power, that our lives and this house might bring honor and glory unto you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. See you next week. Don't forget to vote. Don't forget to vote. Don't forget to vote. Don't forget to vote.